So here I am at the Labyrinth in Multiverse Masters, and this is a small game within the larger gameplay. I'm wearing the Dragon Badge HUD, and you'd wear that throughout the whole, all of the tasks. The Lady in White states, if you can find my book of Vanishment, I will reward you greatly. So this encourages reading, because all of these non-player characters read to you. And then if you click on her again, there we go. The last time I saw my favorite book was in the Labyrinth Tower. I am too tired to brave the Labyrinth. Will you retrieve it for me? With the dragon badge on, you'll see different types of tokens. Click on them, and it will reward you with points. Now here's another woman, so you want to make sure you talk to her. And she is called the Lost Woman. The way of the Labyrinth is challenging. Are you sure you want to go this way? So yeah, I, I want those tokens. So I'm going to, and you can even grab the tokens by by just walking into them. So as you can see, there's lots of little colors. Now these tokens, because of the colors, it can also help you make your way through the maze because if you're noticing the colors, then you can kind of remember your pathway. You can go in, oh look, so then talk to him. Nice blue tokens everywhere. So then, click on him. My favorite is the blue tokens, but tokens do no good if you're lost forever. I should have climbed the vine. Green is a much luckier color. So that's a clue. So he could be talking about the green vine that was outside the labyrinth, or he could be talking about, oh look, a green gem. So what's in this? This is a yellow gem, and over here is a red gem, okay, and a white gem, a dead end. Okay, so this way led to a dead end. So, oh, here's a green gem. The gems repopulate after a while. That way, if they remember, well, that pink way is wrong. They have a signifier, and it helps work with memory. So rather than just the maze, because this maze is a very challenging maze, I actually built this in SketchUp. They can uh, remember the different colors of the gems, and that can orientate them to the maze more than just remembering all of the directions you go in. So it gives that additional signifier. Oh, and I so I get myself turned around. So let me get back here. If you'll notice, you'll probably notice because I'm giving you clues. Look, here's somebody else. Now you speak to him. Now you don't want to click on him right away. You want to speak to him. So he, you get close to him. And of course it says, Though hope for me is gone, I was given the ability to help another. If you wish to leave the maze, click on me. I haven't tested him yet. Okay, so let's go back to him. So then you actually have a choice. Well, you can climb up the, the vine then, or you can go back in the maze, and you can try to, to beat this ground level. Okay, because you get lots of tokens when you're in this level. I don't want to get turned around. Because I also put a lot of red ones in areas that you don't really want to go down. Because red and green, especially for younger children, are a signifier for stop and go. So that's why I chose those two colors too. And you see all these green. Meet these two people. And she lets you know that you've come the wrong way. You have to climb the vine to the upper labyrinth to actually solve this labyrinth puzzle. So they haven't done this in vain because they've gotten lots of tokens. This one, they can just follow the green gems out. And as you're doing this, they might also, if they don't yet, kind of remember the pathway that's in and out of this because if they can signify like that was a crooked pathway and that's the only real one in the maze so if they start remembering this path it's going to help them in the upper maze because the upper maze is an exact duplicate of this maze oh to climb this vine so now i've climbed the vine okay oh here who goes there so you click Clever to climb that vine. You're almost through the maze already. So this is the second phase. So here's another scary guy. Not too scary. So click on him. You will find no jewels to lead your way here, but there is only one correct path to victory. If you remember the way from the lower maze, you, you remember that it's the exact same as below. So once you came out here, we went this way, and there was that where that gentleman was below that would teleport you out. And the tower in the corner is what we're trying to get to. So you see, this is a really challenging part. you got to kind of memorize, and you can go down down to the bottom and practice the route. Until you got, and here's a zigzag. Yay! 
you got to practice the route until you remember these signifiers, like this zigzag and those two large open spaces. And then, see, this is a, another opportunity to get turned around. But I remember that you go all the way over to here, and there should be a long hallway. And there it is. Yay! Okay. So by, rem by memorizing the lower maze, you can solve the upper maze easier. When you go down here, you are constantly being rewarded along the way as a prize. Now we still have the task of finding the girl's book. So now we're going to enter it in the tower. Because that's what she, one of the clues said. And right here, her book. And it says, you found my book. And you get 300 um, tokens for that. But here's that woman again. So we click on her. Thank you for finding my book. Now I remember my spell. When you come up these stairs, you should be able to see that. Click the lantern for a magic ride. So click the lantern. And so just for this video, um, I wanted to show you that one gaming station. And there's lots of mini quests like that throughout this game. I'll make some other videos showing you some of the other gaming options and uh, how they are tied to education and learning.